So we're here at East Denver with Drew Karnowski from Archer Tax Group. And uh, can you tell us what you do? You're an EA. Can you tell yeah, our listeners what, what that is? So it's an enrolled agent. comes from the IRS and it, uh, is a test on competency in individual business and then ethics and representation and the tax law. Um, so what we do is we represent taxpayers and help them strategize their um, tax complications from crypto, from taking payments in crypto, how to divest and keep the most money in their pocket come tax time. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so who can benefit from your services? Uh, probably more people than than they even realize, oh, right? Certainly. So, certainly. so we, we try to focus on um, small businesses that are in the kind of early stages of growth. You know, once they hit about sixty thousand dollars, there's a lot of things within the tax code that we can actually do to maneuver the same dollar in a completely legal way to actually pay significantly less in taxes by cutting out things like self-employment, and then also giving sorts of all sorts of kickback kickbacks like. Um, IRAs and things like that and things that people just don't think even think of like hiring on their kids or even depreciating off their cell phone. Mm -hmm. Great. So what are the kinds of pitfalls that um, businesses or individuals will experience if they don't consult with you uh, ahead of time? You know, Certainly. So our hands get kind of tied after December 31st as to what we can do for a business. Um, so the more that you can plan and structure expenses at the end of the year will definitely help. The, I think the biggest thing that I see is um, a group of guys will get together and, and one of them will start an LLC and they don't realize that LLC is not a tax structure, it's a legal structure. And then they start adding on partners and things like that and they get to tax filing season and they realize they haven't elected the right partnership status or you know an S-corp status or something along those lines. And then one person ends up shouldering all of the expense and then having to write 1099s out to the rest of the partners who actually no longer own anything within the company. So it becomes really messy and really difficult to you know figure out in the back end. So it's always worth talking to someone ahead of time because it's always cheaper to do it right the first time than having to go back and fix it. Gotcha. So, so what are some of the extreme cases that you've seen or any fun, interesting uh, stories you can relay? Oh gosh. So I had a, a client that got paid in tokens and it was a two-year vesting period for those tokens to be received by the client. He could have filed what's known as an 83B election, which he basically pays the fair market value on the tokens at the time of the offer. And then by the time that he actually gets the tokens, he can sell them for capital gains. So because he was in two years, it would have been a long-term capital gains. He would have recognized that income right away at about, I think, like $100,000 instead of the $2 million two years later that he got hit with as ordinary income as opposed to capital gains. So it, things like that, when you're working for tokens, making sure that you know how the tokens are structured coming to you and making sure that you're setting yourself up for success with that is the difference between owing you know $10,000 or owing four hundred dollars to $800,000 in taxes. So with your insight to the space, are you seeing uh, a lot of companies compensating their employees with tokens these days? Is that a common thing? Is it a bonus or is, is, is the main compensation uh, in, in form of tokens? Do you see that a lot? Yeah, so it's, it's sometimes a mix. You know, sometimes we see half fiat, half tokens. You know, we've actually got pulled in for a couple ICO consulting roles of, hey, we're going to pay you a retainer, but we want you to bill half in tokens, half in USD. Um, but a lot of companies, especially the more established ones that are running payroll, are either doing some sort of um, post-tax token pay or pre-tax and paying that way. Um, but a lot of independent contractors are getting paid in tokens. And are they getting paid in tokens that are have liquidity or, or are they getting paid in tokens that, that have a future promise? So, so it, it's a mix. I think, I think a lot of people that are established in the space know that they can ask for tokens with immediate liquidity. You know, they're getting paid in ETH or Bitcoin. Um, as opposed to, you know, well, hey, we're going to get paid in the native token for the platform that we're working on, and then, hey, maybe we'll have some value in this when it launches. I think people kind of got burnt out in 2017 of, you know, every project trying to be, you know, the next great thing, and, I mean, now we're probably down to the 100 real companies that have actually built something and their tokens are still worth something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if you get paid in tokens that are not worth anything yet, but they have a future promise, um, is there some tax considerations? Do you need to uh, register yeah. that as a capital gain? Or a, yeah. so, so when you receive it, so if we're, we're talking, you know, tokens worth one cent and you're getting paid 100 tokens, so it's a dollar, you're going to recognize the fair market value of those tokens at the time as one dollar. Now, when you have the situation where you're getting paid in fiat and in tokens, if the, the token value is de minimis, there's an argument that, hey, I got paid in the fiat, which was my normal consulting rate. And then the tokens are a bonus on top of that, that we could actually set that basis for the tokens at zero. And then when it finally goes to market and sell, then that's when you'd recognize the capital gain. So if you're in that kind of situation, you really want to wait until you hit a year mark before you liquidate any tokens, because the long-term capital gains rates are significantly better than short-term capital gains. All right. Well, what else do you want to tell our listeners? Um, don't forget that uh, April 15th is the individual deadline. You can file an extension, but a lot of people don't realize that... Uh, even if you file an extension, if you owe taxes, you're supposed to pay on that date. 
So there's a lot of penalties that get racked up around April 15th with people just saying, I'm going to forget about it. And the other thing too is, um, you know, in 17's tax filing season, so beginning of 18, there were a lot of people that were really worried because they had these gains. They tried to file right away and get everything taken care of because it was scary and new. And we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown right now in overall volume. Mm -hmm. I think it's starting to come, but it's coming later. You know, we're just now starting to see people reaching out to file taxes for their tokens. If you've got a capital loss, it's a really good idea to still file and claim that because you can pick up up to $3,000 against your taxable income for any losses in excessive capital gains. So once you cross over that 3,000, the rest rolls forward. Mm -hmm. So if you've got those capital losses, you need to claim them in order to harvest them later on and have any benefit you know, for 2019's filings, mm -hmm. especially if the market takes back off again. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and what about your advice for any um, entrepreneurs that are looking to start a new um, startup business in the crypto blockchain space? But they're they're just getting started. They, they don't have their funding yet, uh, but they want to register their business, um, and, and they, they just don't have a big budget to sort of hire a, you know a, a lawyer or a tax person yet. But they want to get the ball rolling. So, could you advise those kind of people? Like where, what kind of business structure you said? Not LLC. So or? I, I do like LLCs. It just depends that you know on what what you need to do with it. Um, the nice thing about the LLC structure is out here in Colorado, it takes fifty bucks to set up an LLC for state fees, as opposed to like a California where it's eight hundred dollars just to get registered. Um, it's really one of those things that you know most companies or most I should say legal professionals or accounting professionals that work with startups understand that there's a little bit of a shoestring budget you know we do offer free 15-minute consultations that we can answer questions or at least you know give them some advice on where to go and always try to work you know we try to work with and structure fee structure around that knowing that that's kind of hard to get started sometimes but that can make a huge difference because um, there's a new provision within the tax code for qualified opportunity zones and they're all over the country if you put your company in one of those qualified opportunity zones and you structure it the right way, you can actually bill yourself as a tax advantaged investment for another person with capital gains. So it makes it a little bit easier to float that money back in because then they can kick their gains down the road until 2026. Mm -hmm. So just knowing things like that and knowing how to structure that intentionally makes all the difference in the world. And it's, you know, like I said, most people will try to work with you a little bit, um, but it's always worth the the legal advice to do it right the first time mm -hmm. because it'll open you up to a lot more potential investment or at least save you some heartache later on. Okay. And what about uh, somebody that wants to start up a business and say, I want to issue a token and I want to be in an unregulated area, like uh, I want to file my business in Estonia. Right. Um, or, you know, are you an advocate of uh, certain locales uh, based on their regulations? Yeah, so it really just depends on what the end goal is. So we see things where, you know, someone does a token raise in the BVI and then they've got their whole development team back in the United States. And what they do is they take all the money raised in BVI and just straight transfer it to the U.S. company. The U.S. company's gonna have to recognize that as income. You haven't really saved anything other than maybe some securities headaches. Once again, talk to an attorney. I do the tax side of things, but there's so much that we can do maneuvering wise, depending on what you need for the actual initial raise. So there's something called uh, Reg CF, which allows you to do crowdfunding raises up to uh, $1.07 million. So it's not a ton of money. It's not the 330 million that we saw in the height of the ICO fever, but that's a pretty good amount of money for a small lean startup that's just trying to get proof of concept mm -hmm. that you could do that uh, raise instead it's a lot cheaper to do than say a reg a or a reg d mm -hmm. and you could still be compliant and u.s based and have you know a little bit more flexibility in claiming um, research and development credits or employer credits and things like that that to that extent you don't have to necessarily play the international game now if you're looking at security tokens or you know doing something incredibly complex where you're claiming your utility token but you're actually a security token talk to an attorney. There's so much that can go wrong with that. We've seen that happen over and over again with the SEC coming back after the fact. And I'm still waiting to see some of the IRS um, rulings, if you will, against projects that claim that you're, they're a utility token, but didn't put aside anything for income tax or sales tax or anything along those lines. I, I think they're going to get ripped apart, not only by the Fed, but also by individual states as well, uh, because there was a court ruling back in 2018 for Wayfair versus South Dakota that says you don't have to be in business in our state for us to charge you sales tax, your customers do. So that's a whole nother frontier of utility tokens that I don't really see anybody talking about or anybody being concerned about. You raise $330 million, your portfolio is now worth 30, and you've got a tax bill potentially looming over your head of another you know, 40 or 50, so now you're technically in the red to a revenue board what's left over for development you know and so there's a lot of concern at least in my end about that we'll see as that kind of develops 
Interesting. Well, that's fascinating and uh, great advice, you know, for a lot of people in this space. So, good to prevent these problems before they happen. Oh, so. For sure. Uh, well, it's good talking to you, Drew. Yeah, thanks and, for having um, And how can people get in touch with you um, with uh, Archer Tax Group? Yeah, so we're on Twitter at archertaxgroup.com, or sorry, at Archer Tax Group, or go to our website, archertaxgroup.com. There's actually a contact us page there that, you, like I said, you can sign up for the free 15-minute consultation. Um, and then it's also got our phone number, too, for the office. So, excellent.